Well, today is the feast day of the conversion of Paul, so let me just make a few comments about Paul. Paul was martyred in Rome, probably during the persecution of Nero, around the year 60 or 64, somewhere in there. He was beheaded in his martyrdom, and uh, he's buried in the Basilica of St. Paul outside the walls in Rome. If you've been to Rome, it's unlikely you went to St. Paul because uh, it's outside the city and it's a bit awkward to get to. So most people will visit the three basilicas in Rome, John Lateran, uh, Mary Major, and St. Peter's, but to venture out to St. Paul's outside the walls is a little bit of an extra journey. Uh, he gets a lot of attention from St. Luke. Now, Luke was the author of the Acts of the Apostles. And in the Acts of the Apostles, uh, the conversion of Paul is mentioned early on, and it's in the third person in there, chapter 9. And then, uh, before that, he mentions him in the martyrdom of Stephen, in Jerusalem. That's in chapter 7 there. And then we have today's first reading, which is a lengthy testimony given by Paul himself uh, about his conversion. He's on the way to Damascus, he says. He has letters from the high priest to arrest and to bring back uh, to punish those who belong to the way. It's rather interesting the way it's described, both in chapter 9 and here in chapter 22. Um, not the followers of Christ. It said those who belong to the Hodos. By then, it's clear that the followers of Jesus Christ were considered a way of life. It wasn't just something you believed in. Those he wants to arrest and bring back to Jerusalem are those who belong to the way. The second thing about Paul that's worth looking at is he was a very intense fellow. He's a fierce spirit. I mean, he brought his intensity to everything he did. Going after the Christians, uh, the martyrdom of Stephen, which he celebrates. Um, he's, he's a very driven type of person. And if you get to know him in the readings here, you'll find out that he's a very intense man. In, uh, this conversion is mentioned in a number of his epistles, in Philippians and in Galatians. But there's one very interesting thing about Paul. He has a, a fierce argument with Peter. And he fights with the first pope, with Peter. And uh, he's very cynical about uh, the leaders of the church in Jerusalem. James is the leader of the church, and Peter. He's very cynical about them. <coughs> and uh, he faces down Peter. He says so himself, he says. I faced him down because Peter was wrong. I mean, he's very outspoken. However, he has a larger agenda here because in Galatians there he says, even though I faced him down and he was wrong, when he went up to Jerusalem, he said, I offered him the hand clasp of friendship because I did not want to break the koinonia. He did not want to break the community. So even though his opinion was intense, his difference Peter, with Peter was very strong, but still, the koinonia, the community, was very important. And therefore, he would not pursue his difference. He extended a hand clasp of friendship because he didn't want to break the community. Now, that's very important for us to keep in mind. Uh, uh, in this day and age, when 
We differ with one another sometimes pretty intensely, but still there's a bigger, a bigger call, it's a bigger reality we must face, and that is hold the community together. Even though within the community there may be differences of opinion, even though there may be judgment of one another, in the last moment you must hold the community together. Put your strong judgments aside, uh, your differences are less than the ideal of holding a community together. That community could be your family, your church. I mean, don't, don't shut anybody out, no matter what happens. And I, I've many, many times preached, never, ever break your family. It doesn't matter how much division there is, do not break your family. When you break your family, it's a very difficult thing to get your family back together. Don't break the church. Don't make hard judgments about people. Honor the conscience of somebody. I was thinking this morning when I was writing journal here about this man, a very close friend, a devout Catholic, even though he differed with the church on many critical issues. Things that church leaders are condemning other people for today. This man had an intense following of Jesus Christ, even though he did not believe in all the teachings of the church. I knew this man's soul. I was his spiritual director. He came to confession to me many times. But this was an extraordinary man. And the thing that I admired the most about him, he was honorable. He was, he was truthful. He was an honorable man. Sometimes people who make judgments about others in the church, they're not always honorable people. Uh, people of real character. This man had an extraordinary character. And uh, he died some years ago. And, uh, but I had so much admiration for him. Not for his belief, but for his integrity. And that's certainly true of Paul. Even though Paul got in conflicts and he fought with some people, he would never break the community. This man was a man of integrity and a man of honor even though he was intense. And the community was very important. For this, he would sacrifice. He would set his opinions aside, and he would withhold his judgments so that he will not break the community. It's very important to keep in mind. Um, that's about all you need to hear about St. Paul. But he's a teacher for us. He's the apostle to the Gentiles. And Peter is considered the apostle to the Jewish followers of Jesus. Paul reaches into a new world. He is the apostle to the Gentiles, to us. Amen. Pause with me now for a moment of prayer for unity. Unity in our country, in our church, in our families in our communities.